In this lecture, we will cover NoSQL databases. We will first talk about the motivations behind NoSQL, its associated data models, and then using MongoDB's MQL as an illustration of NoSQL query languages. To understand how NoSQL came about, it is important for us to first understand the types of database applications and how they are organized. In data management, it is customary to organize applications into two broad categories. First, online transaction processing, or OLTP for short. This includes applications that tend to run short transactional queries, such as banking transactions, looking up a student record, or customer information, etc. In these applications, it is important to keep our asset properties, and therefore, they are also known as transactional applications. The other one is called Online Analytical Processing, or OLAP for short. These include applications that tend to run complex read queries involving many joints and aggregates. For instance, computing quarterly revenues or other kinds of data analytic queries. These applications tend to run read-only queries that don't really modify data. So as you can imagine, they do not actually need to be transactional. So, NoSQL was motivated by these so-called Web 2.0 applications, such as Facebook and Friends. These applications tend to have a lot of clients, and they tend to run very large-scale transactional workloads. For instance, people updating their friends' graph on Facebook, or buying things online, etc. As we learned earlier, running transactions require implementing locks and locking protocols such as 2PL. Unfortunately, these things are hard to scale up to many clients. For instance, consider how we will deal with many transactions wanting access to the same record and getting killed because of deadlocks, for instance. So developers decided to give up transa transactional consistency and also give up on running analytical queries in general. So this, this leads to the birth of so-called NoSQL, which comes with a very simple data model and restricted amount of functionalities that we will learn later on. And the term NoSQL comes into play because we are abandoning SQL and the relational data model and we'll see how this looks like in this lecture. So given this background, let's try to understand why it is hard to scale OLTP applications by discussing how application, database applications are structured in general. In the beginning, database applications are constructed with everything, the user, the app, the DBMS, and the data files all sitting in the same machine. Each application supports one single user, and that one single user have access to the entire machine, just like in SQLite. Consistency here is extremely easy, as you can imagine. The problem is, of course, there aren't many applications in the world that actually fits this mode anymore. So as the number of users increased, we need to figure out how to scale. One way to do it is by outsourcing the application to be running on the client's computer instead, rather than running on the same machine where the database server resides. Here, in this case, we have one single server hosting the database management system and all the other users connecting to it via their own desktop. Consistency becomes harder because we now have multiple clients connecting to the same database server. And that's where all the transactional concepts that we have learned earlier is helpful. But eventually, even that doesn't scale up to the number of clients that we need to serve. So our database management server can't handle all these connections coming through and asking to serve web pages and also retrieving data. 
So now we outsource the application itself from the client's desktop to an application or a web server. The clients now connect to this middle tier web server rather than to the DBMS directly. And the web server now handles connection to the database management server. This is how data web applications, for instance, are structured. And here we can scale up the number of application servers and have each of them handling a different subsets of clients. This is relatively easy to build. We have different web servers hosted in geographically different places. For instance, we might have one server that handles clients from California, another one that handles those from New York, etc. Each client's application state, if any, is kept on one single web server. This sounds great. The question is, why not also replicate the database server in the same way? Well, while the web server only stores individual client states that can only be accessed by each client individually, the DBMS actually stores data that can potentially be accessed by multiple clients concurrently. Think of bank transactions that deducts money from one account and puts it into another. Data consistency now becomes an issue since these web apps are running transactional workloads and we will need to understand how to scale up a DBMS under such context in the next video.